Good day. Uh, Howard Federoff here. I'm the CEO of Aspen Neuroscience, and I'm delighted to be with you. I'd like to briefly introduce our leadership team, uh, Ed Wirth, our Chief Medical Officer, JCL, our Chief Financial Officer, Andreas Bratlial, our Senior VP for uh, Research and Development and Co-Founder, uh, Naveen Christian, Senior Development Director uh, for Corporate Development, and Torsten Gorba, Senior Director for Manufacturing, and importantly, our other co-founder with whom Andreas Bratlial um, had worked uh, at the Scripps, uh, Gene Loring, are, are really the pioneering efforts that led to the formation of, of Aspen Neuroscience. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease, affecting approximately 1 million Americans and greater than 10 million people worldwide. Even with the standard of care, patients eventually develop debilitating motor complications eroding the quality of life. And currently, there are no disease-modifying agents on the market. So Parkinson's is prevalent, it's debilitating, and it is not adequately addressed with current therapies. The economic burden of Parkinson's is estimated to uh, be in excess of $51 billion annually as of uh, 2019. Parkinson's is um, a, a neurologic disease caused by the loss of the dopamine neuron cell bodies lying in this part of the midbrain called the substantia nigra. They send their terminals where they uh, release and ultimately um, participate in the control of motor movements in a part of the brain known as the striatum. At diagnosis, more than 50% of these dopamine neurons in the substantia nigra have been lost. And cell replacement therapy um, offers the possibility of not only releasing dopamine, but importantly, reconstructing the neural networks and circuits um, consequent to the loss of the dopaminergic cell bodies that have the potential to produce disease-modifying um, outcomes. There is a proof of concept that exists. These are the fetal transplant experience. And so stem cell-derived dopamine neurons are an individualized disease-modifying approach uh, that would be restorative cell replacement therapy in the case of this neurodegenerative disease. The fetal tissue that, that was referred to comes from a part of the brain during development known as the mesencephalon, where the dopamine neurons of the type that are lost in Parkinson's disease are developing. Uh, tissue suspensions or small aggregates have been used previously to place these cells back in the Parkinson's brain. And while two double-blind uh, randomized control studies were funded by the NIH and many open-label studies were done, it would appear that long-term uh, benefit or reduction in PD symptoms are possible. And in, in cases where there ha has been benefit, it has been established that at least in some patients, long-term graft survival has been observed up to 24 years. However, a not insignificant number of individuals um, do develop graft-induced dyskinesias, and this complication may well be related to the source of the fetal tissue uh, itself. Therefore, while a proof of concept, a more reproducible and robust approach uh, is needed. So Aspen leverages stem cell biology, uh, and genomics to develop the only autologous cell therapy for the treatment of Parkinson's. We begin with a patient and a skin biopsy. We then reprogram these cells to induce pluripotent stem cells, and then they are suitable to then uh, differentiate into the type of cell type that is lost in Parkinson's, the dopamine neuron of a specific type, which is referred to as the A9 dopamine neuron. Aspen is the only company using the patient's own cells for replacement therapy. Again, in slightly more granular detail, a skin biopsy is taken. Those um, dermal fibroblasts are dissociated. They, they then can be transiently exposed to the Yamanaka factors that produce the induced pluripotent stem cell. This uh, cell then is suitable to be differentiated, and when it becomes determined, embryologically speaking, to be that which is fated to be the A9 dopamine neuron, they then are suitable to be transplanted uh, into the brain of a Parkinson's uh, individual, uh, whereby they complete their maturation, become post-mitotic, can wire up, 
and form the circuits that are necessary to restore uh, function uh, in the setting of a Parkinson um, uh, lesion. The induced pluripotent stem cells have all of the strengths of embryonic stem cells without the limitations of allogeneic therapy, which I'll just briefly highlight. If one contrasts the allogeneic approach with that which we pursue at Aspen, the autologous approach, first and foremost, um, immunosuppression will be required for an allogeneic approach. No such immunosuppression is required for an autologous approach. Uh, because the allogeneic approach lends itself to scale up, billions of cells will be created, whereas for the autologous approach, only millions of cells, so three orders of magnitude fewer uh, cell divisions are required for the Aspen product. Since scaling up creates an opportunity because uh, it is a function of cell divisions to uh, generate mutations, there is a greater propensity for the scaling up to generate those mutations, some of which could potentially be deleterious. Because of the more limited scale out, these probability of mutations are, are much less um, frequent. With regard to redosing, uh, the acquisition of immunogenicity in the allogeneic setting would preclude such, whereas in the setting of an autologous approach, if needed, would it be anticipated that no rejection would be in, expected. Emerging evidence is quite interesting in it's, it suggests that when the A9 dopamine neuron is from an, an autologous um, uh, setting, it forms a greater ingrowth into the denervated striatum, forms more, more extensive circuits, and we are uh, expecting that it will form more functional um, outcomes related to those circuits that are the dopaminergic circuits that will replace those lost consequent to the disease. This is to be distinguished from the allogeneic strategy. Aspen is able to scale out uh, to produce a personalized therapy that avoids the need for immunosuppression. What is the evidence of functional dopamine um, uh, neurons and or graphs with our approach? In terms of efficacy um, studied in vitro in matured dopamine neurons, neurochemistry makes evident that the A9 dopamine neuron produced by our process leads to the release in an appropriate manner of dopamine. Electrophysiologically, when one does patch clamping analysis, uh, one can characterize the intrinsic properties of these neurons, and they are indistinguishable from the A9 dopamine neuron in terms of both the pattern of bursting as well as the character and expression of the particular ion channels responsible for such. In vivo, as we'll show in a moment, these neurons, when transplanted uh, in the rat model, the hemi-Parkinsonian rat model, can restore function. So therefore, um, the in vitro and in vivo studies show efficacy of autologous dopamine uh, uh, neuron graphs. Here shown um, in slightly uh, greater detail uh, is the rotational model that is often used to examine um, Parkinson's uh, therapeutics. Shown here on the uh, vertical axis is the average rotations per minute in response to apomorphine. When there is marked um, asymmetry in the dopaminergic in innervation, as would be the case when you lesion only part of the brain using 6-hydroxydopamine, you get a marked uh, increase in the number of rotations consequent to that denervation when amphetamine is injected. When one asks and, uh, and then transplants um, um, A9 progenitors from Parkinson's IPSC patients, one can demonstrate that there is full behavioral correction as shown here for two lines um, that become uh, after 24 weeks indistinguishable from control in terms of the behavioral assay. If one just looks briefly at coronal slices between control, you can see here Absent a lesion, there is tyrosine hydroxylase staining that appears equivalent on both sides. The loss, uh, as demonstrated here in the lesion side, is quite evident. One can see the intense tyrosine hydroxylase staining when one transplants um, these iPSC-derived A9 progenitors, either from one patient or the other. And then at a higher power, if one examines the outgrowth of Th-positive um, uh, dopamine um, axons, you can see robust innervation 
of the host striatum in this case, all accounting for the behavioral correction that was observed that we talked, touched on briefly. To address potential variability, Aspen uses a variety of predictive genomic events uh, approaches. Here we start with the um, somatic cell. This is the dermal fibroblast. It is subjected to whole genome sequencing and single nucleotide polymorphism analysis. It is determined to be free of cancer driver mutations as well as any other deleterious genomic alterations. And if so, it can then progress to be reprogrammed into the induced pluripotent stem cell, which then upon analysis of RNA-seq and with a machine learning algorithm, which I'll share with you in a moment called Pluritest, can be shown to be suitable to form all three germ layers. Therefore, it is by definition pluripotent. Further analysis using whole genome sequencing and single nucleotide polymorphism analysis is carried out after reprogramming. And then most importantly, as these IPS C clones are then differentiated down to become the determined A9 dopamine neuron. They are then recharacterized and the RNA-seq profile using yet a different machine learning algorithm um, is able to disclose that these cells are now suitable to be transplanted because their fate would be upon transplantation to become A9 dopamine neurons. So the Aspen approach ensures safety, efficacy, it replaces costly animal studies and can uh, speed up the quality control for new cell lines. A slightly more deep um, dive here into the A9 um, dopamine determination and use of artificial intelligence. We have developed a, um, a series of algorithms that can establish identity, purity, potency, and safety by looking at the gene expression profiles and looking at the location of individual clones or populations and where they lie with respect um, to this diagram is shown just grossly um, as to whether they are uh, to be pluripotent or they will be determined uh, as shown here, occupying completely two dimensional space with respect to the algorithm. We have an issued patent known as Pluritest which can be used to establish the pluripotency of novel cell lines and have recently filed other uh, intellectual property, including um, a neurotest patent application that determines the readiness and prediction of efficacy of this determined population. Aspen has developed the manufacturing capabilities uh, to do early in-phase, uh, in phase, uh, early phase um, in-house manufacturing in our ISO 7 clean room. We have hired a team of individuals with the requisite expertise to do such. And we have completed the analytical panels for in-process control and release assays. Our current autologous manual process is robust, ensuring efficient um, and sufficient high quality multi-product yield by physical and temporal uh, segregation. And has been demonstrated to be reproducible with starting materials from donors. We have identified potential technology solutions that are suitable for closed and automated late clinical and commercial stage manufacturing. And these will be implemented as we move further along. The Aspen clinical pipeline is twofold. The most common form of Parkinson's disease is the sporadic form affecting approximately 85 to 90% and outlined as we had discussed previously, starting with the dermal fibroblast all the way to the A9 determined progenitor, we will deliver the A9 um, progenitor therapy in a product that we call uh, ANPD001. We are also focusing in a, in, a, in a different aspect of our clinical development on the most common genetic form of Parkinson's disease affecting between 10 and 15% of individuals worldwide that is owing to mutations uh, within the gene that encodes the enzyme glucocerebrosidase, the three-letter um, designation GBA. Uh, and while this affects substantially fewer patients, um, it does allow us to now interpose an additional step where, whereby we will restore enzyme function to at least normal levels, such that in the ANPD002A9 progenitor population, when transplanted into individuals, 
will not only restore dopamine biogenesis and circuit formation, but also allow for the expression of the glucocerebrosidase enzyme to be able to metabolize the products that are accumulated when enzyme levels are lower. In summary, Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder affecting uh, a substantial number of Americans and many worldwide. It accounts for um, an expenditure of about $51 billion annually. Aspen uses proprietary machine learning technologies that can deliver a safe and reproducible product that has the potential to be best in class. And autologous cell therapies have many advantages over allogeneic therapies beyond simply the lack of requiring immunosuppression. And the deployment of a trial-ready screening cohort strategy will accelerate clinical development of Aspen's work as we get uh, further along. Aspen is the only company offering an autologous dopaminergic cell therapy that promises to restore function in Parkinson's disease. Thank you.